Here we are again with uh, Daisy VL. Uh, first of all, thank you for your, all of your comments. I guess a lot of people thought this was uh, an air rifle, and I can understand that. Probably what threw you was when I opened the action. It, it does look like an air rifle, um, which, which it isn't. This, this is compressing air, so it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but really all Daisy had in mind was, since they had some expertise working with air, they'll use air to ignite gunpowder. And for a short period of time, maybe 10 or 15 years, uh, gun makers and ammunition manufacturers were trying to get away from cases, from brass cases. They thought if we could somehow develop a cartridge that was just the powder and the bullet, then there's a cost saving and there's a weight saving, especially for soldiers. And there was a lot of military interest in this. What does it remind me of? It reminds me a lot of electric cars. And the caseless rounds came to market. The daisy being probably the most common one that you would encounter. And I've always liked them. I Actually, I bought two. I was so fascinated by them. Was it a perfect rifle? Not at all. And they weren't the only company. H&K, um, Heckler & Koch in Germany, uh, came up with the G11. That was a different ignition system that was based on a primer embedded in gunpowder that was also compressed. You'll see the cartridges in a moment. The cartridges for the Daisy are compressed gunpowder and the cartridges for the G11 are compressed gunpowder. Also, Furet in Germany, they came up with the VEC 91, which was a 223, about the same as a 223 or 556, caseless as well. That rifle used electric ignition. So we had primary ignition, electric ignition. I saw all kinds of experimental rifles, which I won't get into. And then probably the simplest and most common is the Daisy VL using compressed air to ignite the gunpowder. So here, here are the cartridges. I just set them down and you can see VL caseless ammunition. And they come in little tubes. This is, I've been doing some shooting because it's so fun to shoot. These are the tubes and there are the cartridges. So it, it definitely is not an air rifle. I don't know what the bullet weighs, maybe 40 grains. Um, and the velocity on the box, I noticed, they say is like 1,100 feet per second. And I chronographed them a few years ago and it seemed more like 1,300. But anyway, um, it's dangerous within, I think I just read, you know, dangerous within a mile or something like that. Um, anyway, so hopefully that helps everybody understand that it's not a air rifle. <laughs> Their velocity, 1150 feet per second. So we were getting about 1300. The concept isn't that difficult. It's, it's just the execution. How do you get gunpowder without a case? Um, and there's definitely a cost saving and a weight saving. So a soldier could carry a lot more ammunition and a lot more ammunition could fit into the rifle and the rifle could be much simpler because a lot of the mechanism and the number of parts is dedicated to handling brass, moving brass cartridges out of a magazine. The G11 had a very unique system, which I won't get into. And even this little daisy, this is a single shot, but manufacturers have to go to market at some point to cover some of their research and development. You know all this. Um, their next model or next model and so on would have been better and better and better, but it never made it past, let's call this the pilot stage. So that's what the DAISY VL is. So yeah, we uh, compress the gas and then we have to load it. <clears throat> so that's one at a time. I find it easiest to actually use gravity and you can see the round now. It's in the chamber there. And then I notice that I get um, excellent accuracy if I push the, the round uh, deep into the chamber. So we're completely uh, safe right now because there's no means for this to fire. 
till we go like this. Now we're ready to fire. And um, I guess maybe the people saw the rifle and thought it looks like an air rifle. Uh, so anyway, it's all good. And it has an automatic safety. So now I'm gonna turn around and then we'll just shoot a metal plate a few times. And you'll see that um, it, I mean, it's it's like a 22 long rifle and more power than quite a few. So it works quite well. And uh, in case you're wondering about the, you know, it, does it cause rust? No, it's just the same smokeless powder. It's, I know it's yellow or ye yellowish, but uh, no, it's it burns clean. Bores are excellent. Everything's excellent. Just it didn't catch on. It was a little bit undeveloped. Anyway, we'll take a shot and then you'll see it working. Yeah, not bad. I mean, you can see our little metal plate. I'm just shooting quickly. And then to, to unload, there's nothing to unload. You'll see, I just open it and there we go. There's no, there's no case of any kind, so We'll take another round, drop it in, seated nicely, got the compressed air working for us, very simple. Yeah, it's not, it's not even a bad group, you have no problem hitting tin cans with this, but if you buy one of these, and they are round, I was just writing uh, somebody in the comments section. They said, where, where could I find one of these? And um, they are in used gun racks, pawn shops, so on. People think that they're air rifles and they pass over them. But they're actually uh, quite a valuable, um, I consider them, collector's item. Because where are you going to find something uh, that shoots from no case? And at the very least, uh, you can go through the same drill I did and show it to your friends. And they'll laugh their heads off because it looks like an air rifle, but it isn't. It's actually quite, quite cool. Caseless 22. And uh, I, I don't know whether we can focus on this, but it actually says right on the action, <clears throat> 22 uh, caseless. Just in case somebody still believes it's some kind of hoax. That That's what this is. And of course, you can see it's a polymer stock that they tried to make look like walnut or something like that but we can easily fire another shot and I like the ammunition in the tubes and ammo is not hard to find also uh, people wrote me that you can um, you can make the powder yourself I'm not sure exactly how but there is a formulation so there we are again and then I I see it. For sure, this is this is a little bit clumsy, you know, especially for someone like me. But you get there. Well, that one's almost right on top of the other bullet. Okay. Well, I hope that <clears throat> clarifies everything for everybody. Um, I probably should have shown in the first video, um, you know, at, at least the rounds, but I. I just assumed everybody knew about these for some reason. Um, anyway, too much time in the cave, I suppose. All right, well, thanks for watching. And I hope that that adds to your inventory of knowledge about very interesting firearms. I'd have to say this is one of the top tenders, really nothing to compare. And maybe somebody will pick up the idea. It's still not a bad idea. Um, rounds would be super cheap if you could get away from those brass cases or steel cases as as um, they now make all right well thanks again take care until next time